Bible this morning to the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter. Matthew 5, and we're going to read about three verses there. Matthew, the fifth chapter, and we'll be reading the 14th through the 16th verse. <clears throat> Hallelujah. During this past election, or during the past, uh, you know, when they were having all of the debates and the uh, pep rallies, as it were, and, mm -hmm. and the different events, Come on. and then Hurricane Sandy happened right there a few days before the election, and something that Governor Romney said <clears throat> stuck out to me, and I think I might have mentioned it already. It's not very often that I quote politicians. Amen. Unless it's a bad quote. Come on. Amen. They don't have that many good quotes anymore to, right. to quote. But Governor Romney, in talking about Hurricane Sandy, said these words. It's time for each one of us to make the difference that each one of us can make. Amen. I thought that was pretty good. Amen. Amen. Then I talked to Brother Lyle Helm a few days after that, and he was talking about his support of this ministry and sending an offering and being a part of it. And his words were that he just wanted to make a difference in some way. I was reading a post from a city or international it's in San Francisco, California. They take up boxes to feed the hungry. And one of the things that they said is every little bit counts or every little bit makes a difference. I was talking to our landlord yesterday and he said the Lord had laid on his heart, he used the word convicted, mm -hmm. Good. concerning the hungry. Mm -hmm. He said that he'd never went hungry a day in his life and when he sees and hears about people who do, it burdens him. And he said there was, he wanted to do something. He wanted to make a difference yeah. in some way. And in this fast-paced world of grab it and nab it and gimme, 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 it blessed this preacher's heart to hear even these few men talk about making a difference. Yeah. Touching someone else's life in any way that they could. Amen. Amen. Right. So that kind of sparked this inside of me and began turning. And I know today that as I told this talk to our landlord yesterday that not one person can feed, can take care of world hunger. Right. Amen. Not, I don't know of anybody who can take care of it on their own, but all of us can do something. Right. Every one of us. you know, We can't do everything, but we can do something. Right. We can all make a difference in some way or another. Amen. And believe it or not, we all do make a difference right. in some way or the other, either for the good or for the bad. Amen? Right. And the Lord began to deal with me on this, and He took me to Matthew, the... <clears throat> 5th chapter, 14 through 16, Jesus talking here, He says, Ye are the light of the world. Now we'll see here that Jesus deals with two different things here, but both of them, of course, linked and joined together. He said, Ye are the light of the world. <clears throat> a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. But they put it on a candlestick, He said, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. I want to talk to you for a few minutes this morning about making a difference in difficult times. All right. Jesus was speaking here, and you'll notice He begins by saying, You are the light of the world. Talking about single, solitary, one-on-one -on -one people. Amen? Yeah. You are the light Amen. of the world. You, yeah. you, you, you are the light right. of the world. Then he turns his attention to a group of lights, or many lights, when he says a city that is set on a hill yeah. cannot be hid. Come on. So he begins by talking to the individual follower of him. Then he turns his attention toward the body of Christ. I'm sure every one of us here, all of you out there listening at one time or another, have been going down the highway in pitch of night and you can look 
so far up the road, maybe from miles away, you can see that the sky is lit up yeah. by a city that you're getting nearer to. Right. The closer you get, the brighter the light is. Amen. When you get to that city, you notice that it wasn't just one light that was lighting up the sky. Right. It was a multitude of lights. Amen. So Jesus first talks about how that we, as an individual, as a one person, can let our light shine. Then he talks about the effect that it has when all of us yeah. let our light shine because a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. All right. Then he goes back and he talks about the single light again. He says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, so that it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine Amen. before men yeah. that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light. He is letting them know that you can make a difference in the life that you live. Amen. The light that you allow to shine can make a difference. What did, he, what did he say? Let your light so shine before men so that they will see your good works. Yeah. And they will glorify your Father which is in heaven. You make a difference today. Right. I think sometimes people don't think that. Yeah. In this past election, there were 12 million voters that did not vote. Yeah. 12 million. That would have been enough, maybe, to make the difference in who we call president. Amen. Amen. Right. 12 million. But many of them didn't think their vote was important. Many of them just were so disgusted with politics they didn't want to vote. Many of them could care less. Right. Amen. That's right. But your vote makes a difference. Amen. Your life makes a difference. Amen. And one of the biggest lies the enemy can get you to swallow today is for you to believe that you don't matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Why do people take their life many times because they feel like that their life just don't matter? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They don't count for nothing. That's right. Nobody cares about them. They're not making a difference. There's nothing that they can do. Right. That's one of the biggest lies that the devil can get you to swallow. Amen. So we can look at it at, at how a city and it lights up the sky, but we can also we can relate to us country folk especially. Mm -hmm. You've been out somewhere, maybe you've been out in the woods coon hunting. Some of you out there I never coon hunted before. But maybe you've been somewhere out in the woods hunting, dark night, it's pitch black. Mm -hmm. And off in the distance. You can see maybe somebody's porch light. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Or maybe you was broke down on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. Your car broke down. You ran out of gas. No lights around except for one light you can see off in the distance. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Somebody told a story, I believe Brother Randy Anderson. He talked about, I don't remember if it was him or not, it was some preacher I was listening to. And he talked about going hunting or something. And he got lost in the woods. Mm -hmm. And he saw a light. Yeah. Ooh, that was him. And he knew if he just kept following that light, if he just kept walking to that light, sooner or later, he'd get to where that light was. Right. And if there's a light there, there must be somebody there. Amen? Right. Oh, my, my. So listen, in a world that is full of darkness, in a world where the church is so worldly and the world is so churchy, you can't tell the difference between the two. In a, in a world that is full of darkness and people getting used to it, one light can make a difference. When you're out there in the pitch of night and you see that, well, what grabs your attention? That one light. Right. What do you run to if you need help? That one light. There's somebody there. There's got to be help there because there's a light shining. Oh, my, my. I wish we could get that today and realize it is important that we let our light shine today. Amen. I tell you every Sunday, and I know you, you, you might, I don't know if you get tired of hearing me say it or not, but I'm sorry if you do, but go out that door and be the light you're supposed to be. Amen. It's not just a slogan. It's not just a phrase I like, Brothers Lee. It's something I believe in. I believe you can make a difference if you will go outside of these walls and allow your light to shine before men and let Jesus live and love through you. Yes. I believe you can make a difference. I believe you make a difference in the lives of those you come in contact with. Right. I believe you make a difference in other people's lives. You are important today yeah. in the work of God. All attention is drawn. We could, we could turn off, every, if, we, if it was nighttime, we could turn off the lights in here, make it pitch black, mm -hmm. where you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Yeah. And somebody could light a match, and everybody's eyes would turn mm -hmm. to that light. Mm -hmm. Amen. True. Why? 
Because when you look at over here, if it's dark, and you look there, it's dark, where you're seeing, you don't see anything either way. That's right. it's, we went to Mammoth Cave, and mm. we got down in there, and they cut off, there wasn't much light down in there to start with. Mm. I couldn't see hardly anything. But they turned the lights off. They went, well, let's close our eyes. The lights was on then. They said, close your eyes, and they turned the lights off. And when you opened your eyes, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Really? Even if you had 20 20 vision. <laughs> But if, if someone lit a match, mm. everybody's eyes yeah. would go to that. Mm. In a world that is full of darkness, people notice if your light's shining or not. All right. You make a difference. Right. When you walk into that place that you work, and many times, I know it's not always like this, I've had jobs where I worked with fellow believers and it was great. Mm. I've had jobs where I don't believe there was no believers there but me. <laughs> When you walk into that place of darkness and let your light shine, they notice. Just as if it was pitch dark and you light a match or you light a candle, All right. they notice. You can make a difference today. Amen. You can make a difference today. Amen. Never let the enemy or your flesh, it's kind of hard to separate the two because your flesh is your enemy. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. Never let your enemy convince you that you cannot make a difference. The reason the enemy wants you to believe that, Brother Dave, right. is because he knows better. Come on. He knows, Brother Sleece, that you can make a difference. Right. So if he can convince you that you can't, well, he's done got well, half the battle won. Because you ain't going to try. True. You don't believe you can make a difference. History is marked by men and women that made a difference. Abraham Lincoln stood on the street corners of New Orleans and saw a slave being beaten and sold yeah. from one master to the other. Mm -hmm. This one single solitary man made an oath and said, if I can ever do anything about that, I will. Right. And he did. Amen. Amen. True. One man. Yeah. That's all God needs mm -hmm. to get something started. That's all you need to start a fire is a little spark. Right. Amen. True. That's all you need is one little flicker of flame exactly. to get a fire started. That's all you need to get a revival going. Right. Amen. You don't need a fancy preacher. You just need somebody that wants to make a difference. Right. You need somebody that's going to allow their light to shine. Come on, preach. History is marked, and we could go on and on throughout history yes. of men and women that have decided that they would go against the status quo. They were not satisfied with things the way they were. That's what we need. We need some church people who are not satisfied with things the way they are. Amen? We need some people who are not satisfied going along with the flow. Amen? We need some people who will stand up for something instead of falling for everything. We need some people today that will let their light shine before me. And then we will see our Father in heaven glorified because of that. Amen. People that make a difference. One man or one woman who made differences all throughout this Bible. You find them. One right after the other. I can't think of a better place to start than Noah. One man. God looks down on the multitude of the mass of the population and what's he find? One man that finds grace in his sight. Don't tell me one person can't make a difference. Amen. Noah, thank God Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. In the time of Nehemiah and Ezra, whenever the city was destroyed and whenever it was laid in ruins, one man gets under the burden. One man, when he hears about the way that the, the city has been, has been destroyed and how that God's people are in, disar are in disarray, yeah. one man decides to get under the burden. And the Bible says in Nehemiah 2 and 10 that when the enemy heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly. Why? Because there was an army that had come? No, 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 no. I'm reading from Nehemiah 2 and 10. It grieved them exceedingly, Brother Sleece, not because there was a great nation that had came along to try and rebuild this place. Not that, see, that's, what we, that's where we get messed up. We, we think numbers is such a big thing. It ain't to God. Right. Amen? Right. We see over and over and over how God used one, two, three, handful, whatever. He doesn't, it doesn't take a bunch of people. The enemy gets upset. Right. And the Bible says it's all because there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel. 
one man. Because one man, oh my goodness. Because one man got concerned about the welfare of God's people. Oh God, help us this morning that there will be men and women that will become concerned <coughs> regarding the welfare of your people. Sam Ballot and them, they didn't get upset because, oh no, we've heard the king of the east or the king from the north or the king from the south is bringing in a mighty multitude. No, they got grieved. They got upset because one man, mm, one, and that's what it does to your enemy today too. The devil don't like it when one man or one woman decides to be different, decides to make a difference. King David Whenever he went down in the midst of the battle, when the Philistines were on one side, the Israelites on the other, and they had them bluffed, they had them scared, one man stands, one boy, they called him, stands there and said, Is there not a cause? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? One man stands before Goliath and sets the Philistines to flight because one man decided to make a difference. There was a lot of men there. Amen? There wasn't none of them letting their light shine. No, must have stuck them under the bushel and put them all out. They were scared. The king who was head and shoulders above every man in Israel was hiding in his tent with his knees knocking together because he was scared. Amen. One boy decides he'll make a difference. All right. We need some people that will decide they'll make a difference today. Amen. Amen. True. David decided he'd make a difference. One man. Right. What about Abraham and Lot? Lot goes off, gets himself in a mess because of the prayers of one man. Lot and his family is delivered out of Sodom before it's destroyed because of Abraham's intercession. You think your prayers don't do any good. Yeah. The enemy tells you your prayers don't do any good. <clears throat> Matter of fact, the enemy has convinced you and sometimes through church members yes. that you've prayed long enough. It's time for you to just let go and don't pray any longer and just put it in God's hands and don't ask no more because that's a sign of a lack of faith. I wish I had I wish I had a sock to stick in the mouth of some church people. Amen. Don't ever stop praying. Don't ever stop pleading and begging God to save your loved ones, to make a difference, to move on the hearts of the lost. Abraham goes out on the hillside and he says, Oh, peradventure, Lord, will you spare Sodom if there's some righteous there? And he intercedes on behalf of Lot and one man makes a difference on behalf of Lot because Lot and his family is taken up out of there before it's destroyed. Amen. The Bible says in James 5 and 16 that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. 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 You can make a difference today. Yes, sir. The time you spend on your knees today does make a difference. Amen. You may not see it. How about Joseph? Yeah. Joseph, hated by his brethren, sold into slavery, mm -hmm. accused, falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, put into prison. Yeah. But because of this one man, on. his gift of interpreting dreams and his obedience to God, this one man keeps all of Egypt from starving to death during the famine. Yeah. And not only that, he keeps his family from starving to death because they're up there and they don't have any food and they wind up coming down and bowing before him and asking, can they have food too? Right. Because one man, through adversity, right. it wasn't an easy thing for Joseph to do. He'd been, to, he'd, he'd been uh, uh, what, rejected by his brothers and, and he'd been thrown into a pit to die and then sold into slavery. Yeah. Through adversity. Oh. Through difficult times. Oh, Abraham Lincoln made a choice in a difficult time to make a difference. Amen? True. Abraham, when Lot was in Sodom, made a choice to make a difference in a difficult time. Joseph, mm -hmm. in prison, decided to make a difference in difficult times. I realize today it seems like times are bad. If we ever lived in difficult times, you would probably, most probably would amen me when I said today are difficult times. Amen? All right. If we've ever lived in a day where we need people that will stand up amen. and make a difference right. that will do something. Amen. Twelve men, most of them filthy fishermen, amen, unlearned and smelly. These twelve men, the book of Acts said, turned the world upside down. Right. Twelve men. Amen. Jesus didn't come with no whole army. Right. Amen. True. Had 12 old followers behind him. Mm. 
Amen. Worldly men. Men that he had called out of their positions of fishing. One of them was a tax collector. Come on. They probably, people that in that day probably thought better of the fisherman than he did the tax collector. Amen. Right. The way we are today about the IRS. Amen. But he had 12 men. And these 12 men made a difference. Yeah. One man at a time. <laughs> Paul and Silas in jail at midnight. Right. Two men decide to pray instead of complain. Two men decide yeah. to pray and seek God and praise His name in the midst of it. Oh, my Lord, what kind of difference can the church make today if we chose to praise His name instead of complain during times of adversity? Paul and Silas declare that they're going to praise Him no matter what. Yeah. And that old Philippian jailer gets saved, him and his house, amen. Mm -hmm. Two men make a difference. Amen. You can make a difference today. Right. No matter how big somebody thinks their ministry is, yeah. or no matter how small somebody thinks their ministry is, Come on. there'll always be somebody you can't reach. Right. That's why it's important that every one of us do our part. Yes, sir. I've heard preachers get on television in different places and say, this ministry is called... To reach everyone. You're not going to do it. No. You're not going to reach everyone. That's why we all have to work together. Amen. That's why this thing's a body ministry. That's because right. there are people there are people that this ministry cannot reach. Amen. Let's pray that God will send a ministry to them that will reach them. Amen. Yeah. Somebody needs to decide to make a difference. Amen. Somebody needs to decide that they can make a difference. Yeah. What's Ezekiel 22 and 30 say? God says, I sought for a man among them that should make up a hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. What do you say he's looking for? A man. One man. Looking for one person that cares. Sadly, here he said, I found none. He was looking for a man, someone, someplace that would dare to be different in a world of compromise. Someone who was concerned enough to be different, but he found none. All right. I wonder this morning, if he looked your way, Come on. would he find none? Or would he find one that said, I know I can't do everything, but I can do something. I know I can't reach everybody, but I can reach somebody. I know I can't get everybody saved, but I can get somebody saved. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. Will he find none or will he find one? Will he find someone that still has a desire to make a difference today? Hallelujah. Somebody. Will he find somebody that's willing to make a difference today? God's looking for somebody that cares enough that they'll make a difference. God's looking for somebody today that will stand for the right whenever everything seems to be going wrong. Right. God's looking for some men that will effectually and fervently pray and will see things happen Amen. in their life. Amen. God's looking for some Josephs today. Yes, He's looking for some Sauls. He's looking right. for some Pauls. He's looking for some Silas. He's looking for Davids. He's looking for somebody that will stand and make right. a difference in the day in which they live. All of these people lived in different times and different circumstances, but they all lived in times of difficulties and they all decided to make a difference. Yes. God's calling men and women today to make a difference. Amen. Someone who will stand in the gap. Right. Someone who will pray for the condition that the world is in. Come on. Someone who will stand and sound the trumpet. Right. Amen. Someone who will stay on the wall like Nehemiah did when the enemy tried to, tried to get him to stop. Someone that will go out to the battle and fight Goliath right. in the name of the Lord. Amen. God's looking for somebody yes. that will make a difference. Yes, sir. God's looking for somebody that will that'll decide, that will make a choice. Right. But see, we've got all kinds of excuses. Yeah. We got all kinds of excuses to why we can't do it. Mm -hmm. I wrote down a few of them. These probably you probably never been guilty of any of these. One of them people like to use, well, someone else can do it better than me. Mm -hmm. In other words, let somebody else do it. Amen. Come on. How about Moses? Here's a good one for you. Moses used this one way back. Mm -hmm. Well, I just can't. Yeah. I can't I'm disabled. I'm slow of speech. I can't do it. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say that over the years. I can't do it. 
And this one is the one that, this is probably my favorite. This is the one that gets my goat the most. That's a good country phrase for you. Well, I can't do much. So they just don't do nothing. Isn't that, well, doesn't that make the ground even? Yeah. I can't do much, so I ain't going to do nothing. Hmm. Doofus, amen? Come on. You may not be able to do much, but you can do something, mm -hmm. amen? I can't tell you how many times people have told us that, well, I would send you some money, but I can't send much. I was going to send you some, but I couldn't send much. Well, send it. Here a little, there a little adds up after a while, amen? Right, I got an offering in yesterday's mail for $3.75. Do you think I took that and threw it in the trash can on the way out of the post office? No. We'll take that and put it with the rest of the offerings and stick it into the work. Come on. It makes a difference what you can do. Right. Edmund Burke said, All that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men and women do nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Come on. So just because you don't think you can do much, yeah. don't let the devil convince you not to do anything at all. Right. Just because you think, well, you know, I'm just too insignificant. Don't let the devil let you swallow that pill because you are significant today. Amen. You are important today. Yes. And some people just say, well, it'll get done. Somebody else will do it. Mm -hmm. I don't have to. Some, somebody will do it. I've heard that over the years. Somebody else will do it. Listen to this. There was an important job to be done and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought that anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Somebody else will do it. Yeah. It's time, oh, it's past time yeah. for God's people to decide to make a difference. Amen. Right where you're at. In the crowd that you live with, make a difference. Instead of looking for a way to move out of the neighborhood, start looking for a way to get the neighborhood saved. Amen. Amen. Right. I, somebody in a while back, they said, oh, pray for me that I can get delivered out of this neighborhood. Now, I never heard them request prayer. And they're not here today. I had never heard them request prayer. Oh, pray that my neighbors get delivered. Like Brother Dave always requested prayer for his neighbors. Yeah. They never requested prayer for their neighbors. They just requested that they'd be some way they could move away from their neighbors. Uh -huh. yeah. Amen. There's some way we can move away from their neighbors. See, we don't, want to, we don't ever want to have to live on the other side of the tracks. We don't want no church on the other side of the tracks. Uh -huh. We want our church over here on this side of the tracks. Where do they need the church the most? Over there on that side of the tracks. Yeah. Amen. Uh -huh. Over there is where they need the help. Over there is where they need somebody that will let their light shine into their darkness and make a difference. Come on, preach. You can make a difference today. Yes, sir. Don't let the enemy... Convince you that you can't. That right. Amen. Good preaching. Oh my goodness. Praise the Lord. So you may not be able to feed all of the hungry today, but you can help those who do. Yes, sir. The Salvation Army will be ringing their bells right. at the department stores this holiday season. Drop in some change in there. You can't reach all of the folks that the Salvation Army are reaching, but you can help them reach them. Right. The local food banks, we received a letter from the one in Ireland a few days ago, and they're doing a fun drive. So help your local Food bank. Amen. Amen. Give somebody some canned goods. And I'm not talking about the spinach and okra that you don't want and is sitting there gathering dust. I'm talking about give them some good stuff. Amen. Amen. If you have to, go to the store and buy them some canned goods to give Amen. to them. I know sometimes whenever the church has a food drive, we get in our cabinet and we dig through there and we're like, oh, it's that sauerkraut. I don't want that. Uh -huh. It's for all spinach. Whew. Give that to the people at the church. Give them something that you want to eat yourself. Amen. Amen. Although we appreciate the okra, we appreciate the spinach, we appreciate the string beans or the green peas or whatever, give them something else too. Right. And most importantly, what about the gospel? That's the most important job of all. Yes, sir. You may not be able to preach, but you can pray and help support those who can. Amen. Amen. I realize sometimes it seems, and I'm closing, I realize, realize sometimes it seems like my face is the one on the billboard. <clears throat> Or the dartboard around here, whichever way it is. Because you take the glory, you take the blame. Amen. All right. So I realize sometimes it seems like that, but you are important. Yes. Amen. Come on. When we get a letter from a man in jail like we did a few days ago, mm -hmm. and he tells me to please tell everyone that makes the radio program and the newsletter, please tell everyone thank you that makes that possible. He's talking to you. Amen. He's talking to you. 
When he sits in his jail cell on Sunday morning and waits for our radio program to come on, or whenever he waits as they, as they hand out mail or mail call, however they do it, in prison, whenever they hand out mail and he waits for the newsletter and he's thankful and he sits there and weeps because somebody cares enough to preach to him over the radio or cares enough to mail him a newsletter, he ain't just thanking me. He's thanking you. Amen. You're part of that. It. it wouldn't be happening if you didn't. The newsletters that we send out, the tapes, the CDs, the radio programs, the radio station. When we hear from a little lady that's bound, that's in, that is confined to a wheelchair in her little bedroom, one bedroom apartment, and she says she sits there at her desk listening to VOTL radio, and then she gets blessed and she gets yeah. fed because she's not able to get out and go to church. She's not just thanking me. She's thanking you. Amen. You're important today. Your offering is important. Your tithe is important. Your prayers are important. Yes, sir. Your attendance to church is important. Amen. You're a part of this. True. You're part of what God's doing. Amen. Too many times the enemy has convinced you because the pastor don't pat you on the back enough, you're not important. Because you don't get the accolades, you're not important. Because you're the one that cleans the commode, you're not important. Every one of us are important to the work of God. I've never believed in little eyes and little and big big eyes and little U's. Amen. Come on. Every one of us this morning are important. And I know we live in difficult times, terrible times for many people. But today's the day to make the difference. All right. Now is the time for you to decide you're going to make a difference. Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Don't let the enemy convince you God. that you're not important because you are. All right. When Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. He's talking about you. Amen. You can make a difference in other people's lives. Right. Nehemiah made a difference. David made a difference. Abraham made a difference. Paul and Silas made a difference. Joseph made a difference. All of the twelve disciples made a difference Amen. because each one of them decided that they would not go along with the status quo, that they would make a difference in Come people's on. life. Come on. If I talk to a group of people this a group of people this morning and I ask them if they knew who D.L. Moody was, mm. more people than not, if they were people that knew much about the gospel and knew much about preachers, would say, Oh yeah, I've heard of D.L. Moody. Yeah. I've heard of D.L. Moody. If I asked that same group of people about a Sunday school teacher whose last name was Kimball, mm -hmm. they would say, never heard of him. Most of them. Kimball was the one that led D.L. Moody to Jesus. All right. That stood outside of the little shoe store where D.L. Moody worked and prayed and said, God, give me the words to say to this young man. Mm -hmm. And went in there and led him to the Lord. And then Dwight L. Moody goes out and becomes one of the greatest evangelists and soul winners of all time. Amen. Why? Because one man decided to make a difference in somebody's life. Praise God. He went into that shoe store and led D.L. Moody to Jesus. Yeah. You never hear anything about Kimball, the Sunday school teacher. Right. But you hear about D.L. Moody. Amen. But Mr. Kimball was just as important because he's the one that decided he'd make a difference in Dwight Moody's life and lead him to Jesus Christ. And then in turn, Dwight L. Moody would go out and lead people to Jesus by the groves, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. You can make a difference this morning. Right. Don't let the enemy tell you that you can't. There's one surefire way to know when the devil's lying. That's when his mouth's moving. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When he, tells you, when he tells you you can't make a difference, you know that you can because He always lies. Amen. Amen. So when I tell you this morning to go out that door and to let your light shine this week, don't just think that I'm saying spitting words out into thin air, but take those words to heart. Yeah. Show the love of Jesus to everybody that you deal with. Be the light in a world of darkness that God has called you to be. You can make a difference Amen. in difficult times. Someone else has something this morning.